Hello Internet and welcome to this Splendor episode on my channel. Today I show a short introduction to modeling with curves to create profiles for 3D printing. Profiles can be very handy for different requirements and use cases. For example, frames and brackets, tracks for LED strips or other linear or curved guides. The initial idea was to 3D print some linear guides for a drill press clamping system and therefore use a C-beam profile technical drawing as a template to model the profile in Blender. To show one another practical example and to demonstrate the overall process and workflow, we will create also a profile for a sweep stand. Two of these profiles can then be used to hold a big paper sheet or a cardboard as a background for photography. Uh, please mind that I use the Curve Extra Objects add-on that gives a variety of new prepared Curve types. And also I use the Curve Tools add-on with some useful additional modeling features. For example, to reset the scale of a curve or to set the point of a curve to its beginning and also a boolean operation on curves and a lot more. The only thing you have to do is to activate them using edit menu, preferences to the add-on tab and enable the add-ons in the add-on list. The workflow splits into two phases. Phase A is to define the curve path which defines the length and the overall appearance of my profile. Phase B is to define the curve shape, which defines the cross section of the profile. For both steps, I will use Bezier curves for modeling. Keep in mind, you can always use a two-dimensional mesh shape and convert it to a curve. So this is also a possible way to define a curve. And now let's start with a simpler use case, the profile for the sweep stand and afterwards continue with a more complicated use case for the C-beam shape using a technical drawing. In my scene settings, I set the unit of measurement to millimeters and set the resolution of the grid in the view to the same scale. Additionally, I activate grid snapping so that I can work with absolute values for positioning curve segments and curve handles, depending on the resolution of the grid. For example, if I zoom in, I can use millimeters and if I zoom in further, I can use a tenth of a millimeter. When I want to model curves with precision based on a drawing or given dimensions, most of the time I use the orth orthogonal perspective. Therefore I use the top level view with the XY plane to model the cross section of the curve profile and the side view with the XZ plane to model the overall curve path. I start with the Bezier curve to model the curve path and align all control points and handle control points to the Y axis in edit mode. Therefore use the keyboard shortcut SY0. Then set the origin of the curve to the control point of the first segment. You can also use the curve tool to do this. Do not scale the curve to prevent any scaling effects later on. Instead select the control point and position them on the selected plane. In case you need more control points, use extrude on the last control point to add a new curve segment and or subdivide a curve segment to create a smoother curve. Switch the curve handle type to vector for sharp edges. The rest of the profile path modeling is straightforward. 
Therefore I crank up the display speed a little bit. As already explained, I restrict my operations to certain axes. For example, for the translation on the X axis, I use the keyboard shortcut GX, followed by a mouse track or directly typing in a numeric value for the movement. Or to limit the operation on the X and Z axis, I'm using the keyboard shortcut Xi Shift Y. This works also for extrusion and scaling. I also often insert the values directly in the location dialog of the item properties. Let's start with the shape of the profile for the sweep stand. First we add the curve profile, which is here a closed curve. You can also use open shapes, um, as we will see in the C-beam example afterwards. You can also use the 2D mesh object and convert it to a curve. Important, take care about the scaling factor and set it to 1 on all axes if not already set. Otherwise the scaling will be used for all calculations in Blender and the resul resulting geometry is difficult to handle. You can use the Curve Tool add-on to reset the scale of your curve. After you defined your profile shape curve, this curve shape needs to be assigned to the profile path curve as bevel geometry. The curve profile can be rotated by 90 degrees on the X axis and by minus 90 degrees on the z-axis if required. With this translation you can see the effects of your profile shape directly on the final outcome. The resulting profile can be closed in the bevel properties of your profile path curve with the fill gaps option. If necessary the model can then be further processed and converted into a mesh model. If you are interested to see the final modeling of the sweep stand, have a look at the end of this video starting roughly at the 14th minute. There I show all the remaining steps to create one side of the sweep stand. For 3D printing I can easily mirror this object and then I can use the two parts to assemble the sweep stand. And now let's start modeling the seeping profile using a given technical drawing. The modeling for this profile follows the same workflow as explained before. Ok, with the difference that I started with the shape. Another new aspect is that we are using a background image for the technical drawing of the C-beam shape. Therefore we drag and drop the image in the top level view and the image is then added as an empty in Blender and has additional position and scaling properties. Here I used a rectangle mesh in addition as a helper object to check the correct size of the technical drawing on the background image. I make sure the background image lines up correctly with the grid and has the expected measures. Then I use a Bezier curve with multiple segments to redesign the profile shape. For the inner circle I use an arc shape from the extra curve objects add-on. To be 
a little bit more efficient, I'm positioning all the curve segments on my drawing and then adjust the curve handles according to the shape of the profile. Now I place the 3D cursor on the world origin and add a arc object from the extra curve objects add-on. Then I adjust the properties of the arc object to fit the circle on my drawing. Because I am a lazy person, I only created a quarter of the profile shape. I used this quarter profile shape in combination with the mirror modifier to create the remaining parts. Then I converted the resulting four curves into one mesh and converted the complete mesh back into a curve. Now I can use this curve as bevel geometry in the profile path curve. The modeling of the profile path curve follows the same workflow as before. I'm using a Bezier curve and position the curve segments on the X set plane in orthogonal view. From here, the next steps are straightforward. If your desired profile shape curve is ready to be used, assign it to the profile path curve as bevel geometry. Using the control point of the profile path curve gives you also additional possibilities. You can twist the profile path at a certain control point using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl T. Or you can scale the profile at a control point using Alt S. But this is not of interest for our use case right here. From here you can play around with the curve handles and segments to form your desired profile. In case you need to, use the keyboard shortcut SY0 to align the control points on the y-axis. For 3D printing I export the selected model to STL format using the Blender STL Import-Export add-on. In most cases, and also for this example, the slicer software can handle slight imperfections in your model and slice your model correctly. My print bed temperature is set between 50 to 70 degrees Celsius, but this depends on the PLA requirements and the requirements of the model that I print. For further details, please have a look into my Cura settings in the video and feel free if you have some questions to contact me using the comment section of the video. While I give you a short summary about my 3D printer uh, setup and my slicer settings, I will run a hyperlapse showing the overall modeling of the sweep stand profile to give you an idea and maybe it's of interest for you. Here are some important slicer parameters that I use for prints that need to have some physical strength. I'm using a 0.4 printer nozzle 
and here I use PLA plus filament. I normally set the layer height to 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters depending on the quality I want to have. The wall thickness is set to 1 to 2 millimeters. So normally 3 to 4 wall perimeters. The infill density is equal or more than 35% for really strong prints. I like to set it to 55%. My nozzle temperature is set to 205 to 215 degrees Celsius, but this depends on the PLA and the related requirements. That is all for today. Maybe it was of interest for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or ideas to share. Curves in Blender are a very powerful tool and we can use curves in many different ways. My topic was to use the models for 3D printing, but there are also endless use cases for this workflow to use it for visual modeling. This was it today from Freedom. Bye and have a nice day.